Hey, Calvary, happy Independence Day weekend. Uh, I'm delighted that I get a chance to share with you uh, this weekend. Even though we've suspended in-person services, uh, we're still uh, up and active Calvary online. I've had people say, oh, you, you canceled services or you shouldn't. No, we didn't cancel. We just aren't having in-person services. But I still want to, to wish you a happy Independence Day, uh, celebrating our freedom as a nation. Yes, I'm grieving the fact that uh, we had to cancel the patriotic uh, service in person. I'm grieving the reality that, you know, we've got this partial shutdown again. Uh, but in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the protests, in the midst of the riots, the economic struggles, and the ongoing, never-ending political vitriol that is raging across our society, can I just tell you that I still believe that the United States of America is the greatest nation on the face of the earth? That, now, that's my conviction. You may agree with me, you may disagree with me, but I have my reasons, and, and they're way beyond just you know political or, or uh, patriotic emotionalism. Okay, uh, I believe the U.S. is the greatest nation on the face of the earth because I've traveled to 34 different countries on five different continents, and I've had a chance to observe what takes place in other nations. So let me just tell you some of the reasons I think the U.S. is a great place. First of all, public restrooms. Okay, in, in some countries, they don't exist at all. In, in some countries, they exist, but you don't want to use them. And, and in some countries they exist and they're nice, but you gotta pay money to use them. And, and here in the US, we got public restrooms everywhere. Yeah, some of them are nasty and skanky and dirty and all that kind of stuff, but they're there and they're available and they're free and you can use them when you need them. And it's, it's just a, a wonderful thing when you travel, I'm just telling you. Uh, another reason I think our country is the greatest is because of our roads. Our roads and our traffic laws and just the order that exists uh, in, uh, in America on the roads. Look, I've been in places where the roads are absolutely insane. There's traffic laws, nobody pays any attention to them. There's traffic signs and signals, nobody follows them. It is just every man for himself. I've been in places where I, look, as a habitual offender of traffic laws, uh, have been terrified of just riding in a car because it's every man for himself and the biggest vehicle wins. Uh, so I, I am just thankful for American roads and traffic laws and order. Uh, another reason I think the U.S. is the best is because of our restaurants. Look, I, I love our restaurants, and, and there's two reasons I think our restaurants are the best. Number one, because you can special order stuff. Okay, I, every place I go, I, I get it Chad's way, all right? I take something off, I add something to it, and nobody complains. They just smile and get, eh, my friends may give me some grief about it, but you know, it's just expected and it's okay. I get it my way. But I was traveling in England. I, I mean, this is a country that really in so many ways looks like us other than they drive on the wrong side of the road. And I'm in a pizza place and I say, hey, I would like this taken off of the pizza. And you know what the person said? I have to ask the chef. It's a pizza place. They asked the chef. The chef said no. I thought, am I in the twilight zone or what? No, the reality was I wasn't in the United States of America. I love getting it my way. And uh, just because I have a drinking problem, I love free refills on my Diet Pepsi. Uh, just because America is the only place I've ever found free refills. I, I absolutely love those. And, and that's one of the reasons I think the U.S. is the best. But let's get serious. Honestly, the number one reason that the United States of America, I think, is the best nation in the world is because of our freedom. Freedom. I know it's kind of ironic that uh, I'm talking about freedom in the midst of kind of another shelter in place, you know, stay at home, uh, partial lockdown kind of thing. But, uh, but we are celebrating freedom this weekend. So I thought I would share some thoughts with you on freedom uh, that, uh, that kind of relate to our situation, but, but really relate to our faith as well. Uh, the first thought is that freedom is precious. Freedom is precious. It's costly. It involves sacrifice. Uh, look, our freedom as a nation was won in a war of independence, and it's been preserved and defended at great cost through the years. Almost one million men and women have given their lives in combat for the freedom of the United States of America. Uh, now, our deadliest war was when we fought with ourselves so that all people could enjoy the freedom that America was established with. Uh, and praise God that 
all men are created are now understood to be created equal and have that right to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. So uh, I'm just uh, I'm thankful for those that sacrificed. I mean, we're a nation that historically is represented by men like uh, Nathan Hale, who said, I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. That was right before he was executed uh, in the War of Independence. Or how about Patrick Henry's quote, give me liberty or give me death. Uh, you know, those are, those are real thoughts and, and they capture how precious freedom is. Our political freedom has come at a cost and so has our spiritual freedom. Uh, the Apostle Peter said uh, in uh, his first letter, first chapter, for you know it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you by your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. It, you see, uh, Jesus died to set us free. Jesus died to set us free from sin. And, and sin is just us being self-destructive. Jesus died to set us free from death. So many people are afraid of death. Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes I wonder, why are we so afraid? And then I realize that they're promoting fear 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, it seems like on every news channel that's, that's out there. Fear is just being amplified right now. Uh, Jesus died to set us free from hell. The Apostle Paul said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus changed our destiny from hell to heaven at when he died to set us free. It's in his death and in his resurrection that we find our freedom. So freedom is precious. And I would point out that freedom is powerful. Freedom is powerful. Uh, it's life changing. I mean, think about the way that our lives have changed through the shelter in place, stay at home, emergency orders, and how they affected so many people's lives. I mean, first of all, there was that whole toilet paper hoarding thing and, and people cleaning out the grocery stores in kind of a panic mode. Uh, but a lot of people, as, as this extended, you know, felt trapped, they felt isolated, they felt confined, they felt restricted. Uh, and, and terrible things happened. I mean, uh, addictive behaviors increased, abusive behaviors increased, uh, self-destructive behaviors increased, suicide attempts skyrocketed, depression went up. Because it's difficult for us when we don't have that freedom. Freedom is life-giving. Freedom is hopeful. Freedom is exhilarating. Hey, think about this. Do you remember turning 16 and getting your driver's license? and having the car, whether it was yours or your parents, and you had your car and you're out there and you're driving and that, this is that exhilarating feeling of freedom. I don't know about you, I always just was like, I wanna just drive someplace, I just wanna go. Or, or how about when you moved out on your own? And I'm not talking about where mom and dad are still paying all the bills, I'm talking about where you are free, you're on your own, it's your place and you have unlimited freedom. Of course, then you discover that you have a very limited bank account and uh, that it kind of stinks to have to pay your own bills and, and, and every, you didn't realize how much mom and dad actually paid for you. But, uh, but that feeling of freedom, freedom affects the way that we think, the way that we act, the way that we live. It even affects the way that we make decisions. See, in my travels uh, and, and just coming into contact with other cultures, one of the things that I've noticed is our culture of freedom in the U.S. is so unique. I mean, it is absolutely unique. And freedom is why people all over the world want to come here. Uh, I mean, uh, look, uh, in my travels, I know the, the news always tells us that how much people hate America. And I know there's people out there in countries, leadership out there that hates America, but everyone I run into doesn't hate America. They envy America. They want to be in America. They want to have the freedom that we enjoy. They want to experience the opportunity that we have for education, for work, for just reaping what you've sown. I mean, I've sat with refugees from oppression and war and famine, and their dream, their fantasy was somehow to make it to America. I, 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 they want freedom to live, freedom to work, freedom to worship, because freedom is powerful. Freedom is powerful politically, 
but it's also powerful spiritually. Jesus said, John chapter 8, So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. If Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. Uh, That's an amazing statement. See, Jesus does not want you living as a slave at all. He doesn't want you living as a slave to sin. As I mentioned before, sin is just our self-destructive behavior that destroys us and a lot of times hurts other people around us. But it's just us continually doing those things that, that bring harm to ourselves. They always look appealing. They always look delightful, but they end up destroying us. Jesus wants to set us free from that. Jesus wants to set us free from living in fear. As I mentioned, fear is being sold, it's being promoted, it's being amplified all the time, but fear makes us slaves to the unknown. Right now, the fear is all about COVID. What if I get COVID? What if my loved ones get COVID? What if we die? Uh, Some people you know, right now would protest what I'm saying by saying, hey, look, people are sick and dying. And that is true. And that's tragic. And I want you to take precautions. That's why we're, you know, suspending in-person services right now. We want to protect those who are vulnerable. We want to protect you. We want to, you know, get these cases down again. But, uh, but can I just encourage you, don't let fear make your decisions for you. Don't, don't live as a captive to your fears. Uh, And for the record, throughout history, since Adam and Eve rebelled against God, people have gotten sick and people have died. It's part of life. And that's why Jesus came to set us free from sin and death and hell. He came to set us free and change our destiny so that we don't have to live consumed by that fear because we know that God has prepared a place for us. And and so, and here's the thing, next is going to be better than present. It really is. And so we need to own that and and allow that to set us free. And and no, I I don't want to get COVID and I don't want to die and I don't want to do all that because I kind of like life right now. But I'm not going to let the fear of that stop me from living free in Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to set us free. He wants to set us free to to celebrate and free to serve. Here in in Lake Havasu and down in Parker, as we do service projects, I love getting the question asked, why are you doing this? Why are you spending money and energy to make our community better? Why are you investing in schools and blessing teachers? And and why are you uh, giving away candy? And why are you painting this? And why are you cleaning that? Why are you donating to these causes? Uh, You know, uh, being able to, to bless our Lake Havasu City Police Department and say thank you for serving and giving them all gift certificates. Every officer, every employee to say, we love you and, and we appreciate you. If people say, why do you do this? And I get to share with them because Jesus loves you, because he loves us and he gives us life and sets us free, free to serve. Jesus wants to set us free to worship and free to bless Do you realize that every time you open your mouth, you can bless people or curse people? And it doesn't cost you anything to bless people. You are free to do that, free to encourage, free to build up, free to affirm, free to say thank you, free to offer counsel and wisdom. It's called, those are all blessings that you have the ability to give to every single person in your life, every single person who's in front of you. You're free to do that. Jesus wants to set us free to love and free to be generous. Man, I love the generosity of Calvary, that we're able to bless the way that we are. But but here's the thing, we're not just blessing our community. There are people of all different colors and races and belief systems that right now are benefiting from your generosity in other parts of the world. They're drinking clean water because of you. They have enough food and nutrition and health care because of you. Your generosity is being used by God in in amazing ways. And we're free to be generous. Jesus has set us free to fulfill our calling and our purpose, to accomplish our hopes and dreams. Uh, It was awesome to see 46 people declare their faith in Jesus, their commitment to follow him in baptism this last weekend. What what an amazing joy. And, And we're free to do that. See, Jesus wants to set us free to make a difference in this world. Freedom is powerful. 
politically and spiritually. And I got to tell you, freedom is worth protecting. Freedom is worth protecting. Now, if you're a student of history at all, uh, and, and I am, then you would know that people always want to take away freedom. They're always trying to infringe on our freedom. That just is natural. John uh, Dahlberg Acton said, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we see that all the time. People in power want to take away our freedom. During the pandemic, we had the stay-at-home orders, the shelter-in-place orders. And, and, you know, it's still active in some states fully, in ours partially uh, for the next 30 days. And, you know, uh, I, and, and my spirit that loves freedom just grieves that. It groans under that. A lot of you do as well. Uh, freedom is worth protecting. And so uh, I just want you to know, Calvary stopped worshiping at our physical campuses for 10 weeks in the spring, for the next four weeks uh, in July as our choice. It's our choice. We made the decision to uh, follow the recommendations and requests of our governor. Uh, we decided to be online only to protect the vulnerable, to flatten the curve, and to give the medical community time to prepare and not get overwhelmed. We want to protect and bless people. But on the other hand, I personally agree with federal uh, judge James Deaver, who said there is no pandemic exception to the Constitution. So what we do is by choice, not by mandate. Uh, and, and, I, and I hope you realize that. And by the way, it's not only governments that engage in the overreach of authority. Religious authorities dislike freedom as well. Uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and some of you are like, is he ever going to get to the, the, the verse? Galatians 5 says, for freedom, Christ has set us free. It was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church. He says, for freedom, Christ set you free. Jesus wants you to be free. Therefore, don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. Now, Paul was challenging religious legalism. Okay, there's a group of people who were following him around while he was starting churches and preaching the grace of God in Jesus Christ who were trying to tell people, hey, uh, that's not enough. You've got to actually become Jewish to become a Christian. You actually have to convert. You have to get circumcised. You have to follow the laws. You have to attend the feast. You have to make temple sacrifices. You got to do all this if you're going to be a Christian. And, and the Apostle Paul said, no, it's Jesus alone. He has set you free from the law. He set you free from death from hell, from all of that burden of shame and guilt, he set you free. And, and Paul said, don't try and, and let people control you and control your behavior for any reason, even if it's for your own good. And then he went on to say, if you surrender to the Holy Spirit, okay, if you surrender to the Holy Spirit, you're, you're not going to gratify the desires of the flesh. You walk by the Spirit. He, he said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, so we are called to freedom and to use that freedom to love people. Cannot emphasize that enough. The freedom is not given for you to indulge you. The freedom is given for you to bless others in Jesus' name. So we are free to love even when disagreeing with other people. Even when disagreeing with other people about how to respond to the pandemic. Because some of you are pro-mask and some of you are anti-mask. And some of you are pro-social distance and some of you are anti-social distance. And some of you are, are pro-stay at home and others of you are, are pro-get out there and get this over with. And look, it doesn't matter. You, you're free to disagree, but disagree in love. If love isn't part of your disagreements, then, then you're wrong. You're free to disagree about uh, you know, what, what it looks like for, for uh, racial justice. You're free to disagree about what it looks like for, you know, justice for the unborn. You're free to disagree about these things, but we need to love the people that we disagree with. See, we're free to love, not free to win, free to love. So I'm just going to say this. We need to protect our freedom. Okay, uh, first of all, politically, if you're a United States citizen, then please participate in the process. Vote, register to vote. Uh, I think uh, Monday is the last day to register to vote for the primaries. 
So uh, if you're not registered to vote, then register to vote if you're eligible to vote. It's one of the privileges of being a United States citizen. It's one of the reasons our country has, has been great. And if we want it to stay great, then we need to participate in the process. You need to read some history, stay informed, and never surrender your rights. As a U.S. citizen, don't give up your rights. Uh, look, I want us to do the right things as a church and as individuals, I want us to do the right things for, for society, but I do not want to be forced to do the right things. I want us to choose because it's the right thing to do. Uh, listen to the Apostle Paul when he says, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. We need to protect our freedom as United States citizens, and we need to protect our freedom as followers of Jesus Christ. We need to protect it spiritually. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you believe that Jesus actually is the Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins, and you believe he was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus uh, with your life, then protect your spiritual freedom. Say, so how do we do that? How do we protect our spiritual freedom? Well, first of all, you need to pursue a relationship with Jesus. When you confess Jesus as Lord, you entered into a relationship with him, but you need to pursue that relationship. You need to put effort into it. You need to put intentionality into it. Otherwise, you're not going to get close to Jesus. You know, it's kind of like me sitting there eating my ice cream and, you know, struggling with buttoning my pants and going, uh, I need to get in shape. If I want to get in shape, what do I need to do? I need to put down the ice cream. I need to go to the gym. I know the gyms are closed. I need to go work out. I, I need to get healthy. I need to eat healthy. I need to you know, put some effort into it if I want my pants to fit. It's that simple. So if you want a relationship with Jesus, you want to protect your spiritual freedom, then pursue that relationship, which means attend worship. <laughs> some of you are like, we can't because we can't meet in person. Yes, online worship counts. Gather with your family, put it up on the big screen, sing loud, join in, but attend worship, read your Bible. You know, we give them away for a reason because we want you to read them because we want you to learn them because God will speak to you. Spend time in prayer. You go, I can't do anything. How about turn off the TV and how about pray? Spend a half an hour, spend an hour, spend half a day just talking to God. If you don't know how to do that, email us. We'll send you some guides that you can use uh, to, for a day of prayer or an hour of prayer. Uh, connect to a life group. I know we don't have life groups right now, but we're going to have life groups in the fall. You go, what if we can't meet? We'll have them, virtual or in-person or a combination of both. We're gonna have life groups. And, and serve, find a way that you can bless other people in Jesus' name, whether it's through the church or outside in the community, uh, you are still representing Jesus. So find a way to serve. That's what pursuing a relationship with Jesus looks like. And while you're doing that, if you wanna protect your freedom, then protect your character. Avoid the temptations. And look, being told to stay at home creates lots of temptations. During this time, lots of people have um, you know, become experts on everything that's on Netflix, uh, or Hulu, or on TV in general. And, and let's face it, a lot of it's trash. We know it is. We even tell our friends, that, yeah, it's trashy, but I watched it. A, a lot of people have fallen back into addictions with pornography because it's available and it's something to do. And a lot of people have fallen into eating too much and drinking too much. Protect yourself from those temptations. Protect your character. It was for freedom that Christ has set you free. Don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. And then participate in God's kingdom, which means loving people and serving people and telling people how Jesus has changed your life. See, today we celebrate freedom. And I pray that you are grateful for your freedom as an American citizen. It is a gift from God. Enjoy it. And I hope that you are free in reality because you have experienced a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. If you haven't experienced that relationship and you want to, then please message us. Uh, you know, click on the, the button that's going to appear on your, on your screen online if you're watching on a computer or a tablet or a phone, and click that, and then reach out to the online host, talk with them, engage them, tell them, hey, I want to talk to someone about following Jesus uh, we would be glad to follow up with you. You can go to our website and you can fill out an online connect card and tell us that you want to talk about Jesus. We'll connect with you because we want to help you be free.
Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for setting us free. Thank you for giving us the gift of life in Jesus. And thank you for gifting us with a nation that allows us to worship and serve and proclaim you freely. Uh, it's not something we should take for granted. But God, we, we recognize it's a gift from you and, and we praise you for that. And our prayer today is that we would live free as sons and daughters of God, that we would be those who love, that those who bless, those who encourage, and those who serve others in Jesus' name, because that's what you have saved us to do. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, in just a moment, uh, we're going to have a closing song. It's not going to be a traditional worship song. It's going to be the, the closing song that uh, a lot of times we do for the, the 4th of July patriotic celebration service. And, uh, and it's a song that I know most of you know, most of you love. If you're watching from another country, you guys can take a pass. But the rest of you, get on your feet and sing along with us because we're going to be led in God Bless the USA.